Nine o'clock. The hour came. It was time for Cody Rhodes. Because you can tell they've uh, obviously got a lot of faith in him. They're giving him the prime spots on the on the programs coming up at the top of the hour, et cetera, et cetera. He's doing a wonderful job with them. Did you see the sign in the crowd on his way to the ring? Roman's worst nightmare, N-I-G-T-M-A-R-E. <laughs> and the crowd was chanting, Cody, Cody, and they're in Canada. So if if this crowd was going to, you know, uh, uh, fire back at him for Sammy not winning, they would have taken some of it out on Cody. So he gets in the ring as soon as he says his first words. So there's Paul Heyman on the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children. Oh, that's the other guy. <laughs> Paul had both belts and a neck brace on and not even the fucking Andy Kaufman kind of, you know, soft neck brace. He had the cervical collar on, which I don't know how they found a cervical neck collar that was that was like a tube straight up and down because Paul doesn't really have an indention for a neck there. It just goes from ears to fucking shoulders. So he kind of looked like the, the, the juggernaut. I feel like you get revenge for every comment he made on TBS in like 1988 and 89. <laughs> every time you talk about it. I'm, I'm, I, have, I do nothing but put Paul Heyman over and praise him for his verbal ability and that he's the best promo and one of the greatest minds in wrestling today and it's not my fault that that the natural thing to also talk about is his completely repulsive physical deterioration because he remains three or four years younger than me and i don't want people to forget that but anyway Heyman's on the screen and Cody said, well, where are you, Paul? Why don't you come out here? No, I'm, I'm backstage. And uh, uh, I was mauled Saturday night and subjected to the miserable Canadian health care system. But I faced as close as I'm willing to be to face, you can't beat Roman Reigns. And then, Paul, it, it's a mind game, as you will see, that they're playing. It's masterful with Cody, where Paul tells Cody the story What's going to happen if the impossible happens? And he did it much better than I'm going to do it here. I'm just summarizing. But if the impossible happens, what will your life be like? Roman Reigns has me, the wise man, but you're going to be an indentured servant. Life on the road, 200 days a year. Defending the titles, 50 days of charities and red carpets. I don't know if I'd... If, I believe everything else. I believe 200 days a year on the road, 30 days overseas, 20 days promoting big events. I'm not sure about 50 days of charity and red carpet, but nevertheless. And when he gets home, he's gonna, if, if you got 60 days left over, you're going to be on spike calls <laughs> or Skype or whatever they call it, he said, and Zooms and meetings. Do you want that life for your wife and child? But don't worry, Cody, on those cold winter nights when you're away, Roman Reigns will be there to keep your wife warm. Because it's going to be open mic night, bitch. No, um, I, you know, I've just realized, there you go. There's the baby face. The war games, five on five. Roman, Solo, Usos, and Heyman versus Cody, Sammy, Kevin, and Brandy. Just put Brandy in there. Maybe she could bring back Awesome Kong and uh, Mel. She could bring back the Nightmare Collective. I forgot, oh, I forget they shaved that girl's head for and never Mel. Her again. <laughs> what Mel, about here's our girl Mel. <laughs> I wonder how her hair's doing now. It's been a few but years. He but he didn't say that. He didn't say. He said that he was specifically not saying that Roman Reigns will be there keeping his wife warm. He'll be there. I, well, true, true, true. He said, I, I, he said, you know, what was it? How did he phrase it? No, that, that's not. Roman Reigns is a very happily married man. But I'm not. <laughs> I thought he had kids. Did he? What, Doesn't mean you have a he, wife. Well, but is he, is he mad at his wife? Or what, did, did he? Well, I don't know if he's what, married did, did any he, longer. Did he, go, did he go to one of those Michael Jackson clinics to have his children? He's, he's talked about it. I'm not talking about the man's. <laughs> 
Will you stop personal it? life and family on the air now? He's he's done interviews saying when I had children, then things changed for me and blah blah blah. So he's acknowledged he's had children. He's never been married. Did he have a, a test tube situation going on? What the fuck? We need to find out more about that. I believe he's married and divorced. Asked and answered. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> See that that was easy, but we never whatever we never heard conspiracy about the wife. theory you came up with. We never hear about the wife, so I was wondering if it was if it was it Debbie Rowe, perhaps Debbie Rowe. Remember Debbie Rowe? She was one of Michael Jackson's surrogate mothers. She made some oh. money. Paul dresses well. He's made some money. Maybe he's. I thought that was the woman who worked the door at the ECW arena, Debbie Rowe. But anyway, back no, to her. no, that was Row Your Boat. <laughs> um, <laughs> So <laughs> anyway, Paul says that Cody, your WrestleMania dreams will become your own personal nightmare. And then Cody just dismisses Paul and turns to the camera and says, you know, you're great, Roman. You're great. Don't send this man to me again. Are you a warrior or are you an errand boy, Kabuki? No, I was dusty. You're the greatest champion of all time, Roman, but I have to finish the story and I'm going to beat you at WrestleMania. So he just disregarded Paul's mind game attempt and he's spaking, sp spaking, and he's, he's spaking. spaking, he's spitty. You don't want me to spit in your face, Lance Russell? Tojo said that one time. <laughs> um, He's speaking directly to Roman when he says, this whole thing is just falling apart. <laughs> I agree, though. He's spaking. <laughs> He's spaking. <laughs> he certainly did. Right to him. Oh, I love that we are now one step closer to Heyman being out there cutting a promo, and all of a sudden we hear, who told you it was open yeah. mic night, bitch? <laughs> and here comes Brandy. It'll be the greatest thing ever. Um, This is great. You know what? Cody's great. You know, I've said it before, it's the difference between the stuff he's doing here and the stuff in AEW. At times in AEW, it felt so disingenuous just because of the word selection at times. It's working a lot better here. Yeah. And he, when well, he that, looked that, into the microphone and you look in his eyes, that's all you need to do. Just let him do that. There's uh, Cody is coming up with this material, obviously, but there's people here, qualified people that are allowed to produce things. And in AEW, Cody was doing his own shit with nobody to say, well, you know, change the, the, the to a, and, you know, just tweak it a little bit. And he didn't have people surrounding him that were going to give performances up to the level of Heyman's or Sammy's that, have, and he didn't have the television production crew that was going to be able to shoot this whole thing and put it together in this fashion. And we've said that it's Cody is perfectly at home in a sports entertainment, big setting with other people that can hold up their end of the thing. And he was, you know, floating around uh, and almost an anomaly in AEW. But there you have again, Cody and Paul. So we got a good interview at the start and a good interview at nine o'clock and pretty much cockeye in between. Go ahead. What is there until WrestleMania? Six weeks? Somewhere around there. What do you do? I mean, do you have him and Roman get physical before Mania or do you keep it where even if they face off, there's nothing physical. It's just a, a battle of words so that people can't wait to see that. To see, I can't talk. So if people can't wait to see the fucking match. <laughs> what do you think they should do? You know, in over six weeks, couldn't they do one of each? Because, you know, a lot of times something is is diminished by having physical angles, and that's something Shitstain used to do. If if he had six weeks for a pay-per-view, he'd have the guys in the goddamn feature matches fighting and beating each other up back and forth so much to the point that finally you didn't want to see the match because you'd already seen all this shit, yeah, right? That's right. Um, but if it's the right idea and if it's executed correctly, I don't see any reason in the world that shortly before, you know, the go home period last week or 10 days that Roman couldn't, I'm not talking about coming out there and just slaughtering Cody and just leaving him laying and bashing him with chairs, all this stuff they've been doing, but some 
physical thing and, and not leave him laying there flat on his face, but to hurt him physically about the same amount as his pride is hurt at the same time to just give him that extra oom and get a little shot in on him. And also I think they could certainly have some type of verbal exchange with, again, with Paul involved and Cody and that's going to be, I would think if they have the, the material and I don't see why they wouldn't, that could be great too, but you don't want to see him face to face every week. You don't want to see him physical every week or even more than once. I don't think. And, you know, you, just space it out. One week, something happens. Next week or two, uh, summarize it with packages and flesh it out with the individuals, but they're not together. And then billboard what's going to happen next week or whatever. When it was last week that this happened, but next week so-and-so is going to be back to block, whatever the case. That's not a long period of time to do something like this. And in the meantime, you've got shit going on in the periphery that we already talked about with the Usos and Kevin and Sammy and Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. You think this Speaking could, of them, you know, what, you know what, this could what, be a long-term thing. And if Roman's really going to take any time off that that ever happens, or if this is the extent of the time off schedule that we're going to get and Heyman has more time, Cody's a perfect Heyman project. Not that Cody needs someone to coach him. Although at times he does maybe with promos, but Long-term, a Cody versus Heyman feud, post-bloodline. That could be good down the road because it's just about promos. It's about emotion. You can get it out of those guys. And that kind of could kind of be like the Heenan and Hogan arrangement where Heenan was always finding somebody to try to take Hogan down. It's like everything that Paul grew up with. You had three heel managers who never took bumps. And they always had a cast of characters coming in and the credibility was on the manager until those people made it. And usually the manager's credibility was enough. I believe Paul is one of the people that believes that a lot of those Bob Backlund sellouts should be attributed to Lou Albano versus Bob Backlund as opposed to yeah. Bob Backlund versus Samoan number three or whatever it may be. <laughs> so um, I don't know. They actually did that, by the way, folks. A Samoan number three one time. Brian's not kidding. Samu. That was when Samu first started, and they didn't want to call him Samu for whatever reason. <laughs> so Samoan number three was better. Uh, Here's than... Alpha, Sika, and Samoan number three. 